this is going to be one of the harder problems that we'll see in this unit. And it deals with a scene from Home Alone. So if you remember the scene where Kevin is sitting in his house and the burglars are in the treehouse and they're trying to get to Kevin's house through a rope that connects the two. And then Kevin, they start sliding over and Kevin sees them, of course, cuts the rope and then they go flying into the house and they get hurt like they always do. But we're going to look at a, a snippet of this and that's as the burglars are about halfway between the house and the treehouse and hanging just for an instant at rest. So halfway between hanging at rest between the house and the treehouse. And just to make it a little bit simpler, we're going to look at only one burglar, assuming he has a mass of 60 kilograms, and we want to look at the two angles from the rope. One of those angles, this should be 30. So one of those angles is 38 degrees, and the other is 16 degrees. I'm going to draw the diagram. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense once you see the diagram. So let's start with a diagram of what's going on here. Here's Kevin's house. And here's the window. And then over here, we're going to put our tree house. So here's the tree. And then the house and the tree. And then there's a rope connecting the two. And the burglars are halfway between. So here he is hanging from the rope and at rest. I want to add in the angles. Not drawn to scale, but one angle is 37 degrees and the other angle is 16 degrees. Now listing what I know. Given. And it's only three things that I have. First, the mass is 60 kilograms. Second, theta 1 is 37 degrees, and theta 2 is 16 degrees. And this should be 38, sorry, this should be 38. It doesn't matter what I make theta 1 or theta 2, um, so you could have easily switched those as long as you stay consistent when dealing with each of the two tension forces as well. So what we're trying to find is FT1 and FT2. And these are not equal because your angles are not equal. So if you had the same angle for both sides of the rope, then you would have equal tension forces. But due to the different angles, we do have to solve for two different things. Let's draw the force diagram. For the burglar, Every force, I'm sorry, every object has FG going straight down. And then you have tension in one direction, FT1, and tension in the other direction, FT2. The two tension forces are the ones that I want to break apart. So I'm going to break these apart into FT1X. Going to the right, that should be straight up. Going up is FT1Y, and FT1 was the one at 38 degrees. And then breaking apart FT2, we go to the left with FT2X, and we go up with FT2Y. And this was the one at 16 degrees. Because the burglar is at rest, my forces should be balanced. So right equals left and top equals bottom. That means that FT1X equals FT2X and FT1Y plus FT2Y equals FG. And unfortunately, the only thing of these five forces that I do know is the value for FG. So this is going to take a little bit of substitution. We will end up with two equations and two unknowns. So these are our two equations, and we'll see where the two unknowns come from in a minute. I'm going to start by looking at FT1X. That should be a 1. 
equaling ft to x. And I'm going to break each of these apart into how you would find the x component. The x component of any force is equal to the force times the cosine of the angle. So ft1x would equal ft1 cosine theta1, and ft2x would equal ft2 cosine theta2. Doing the same thing for the other equation in my y. ft1y plus ft2y equals fg. y component is equal to the force times the sine of the angle. So ft1 sine theta1 plus ft2 sine theta2 equals fg. Now, the only things I don't know are ft1 and ft2. So I've got two equations with two unknowns. I know my theta1, I know my theta2, and I know fg doesn't matter what you substitute to solve for, but what we're going to do is isolate one and then plug it into the other one. So I'm just going to isolate FT1. So FT1 from here would equal FT2 cosine theta2 over cosine theta1. Let me write that again since I ran out of room. So ft1 is equal to ft2 cosine theta2 over cosine theta1. Plugging this into the equation in the y direction, ft1 sine theta1, so substituting this in for ft1 we get ft2 cosine theta2 over cosine theta1 sine theta1 plus ft2 sine theta2 equals fg. I'm going to get rid of the fraction, multiply everything by cosine theta1. So we have ft2 cosine theta 2 sine theta 1 plus ft2 sine theta 2 cosine theta 1 equals fg cosine theta 1. That's the one there. Distribute, I'm sorry, factoring out the ft2, we get ft2 cosine theta 2 sine theta 1 plus sine theta 2 cosine theta 1 equals fg cosine theta 1. ft2 equals fg cosine theta 1 all over cosine theta 2 sine theta 1 plus sine theta 2 cosine theta 1. We know every single one of the values on the right hand side. It's just time to put in the numbers. So FT2 equals FG which is equal to mass times 9.8. So 60 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Cosine, my theta 1 was 38 degrees, divided by cosine 16 degrees, sine 38 degrees, plus sine 16 degrees, cosine 38 degrees. This is a mess to put in your calculator, so unless you're really careful, I would suggest doing this in parts and then adding them together and dividing, but 
once you do this all out, you should get 572.73 keeps on going. The bottom is unitless, the top you end up with units of newtons. Don't trust me, I would do this on your calculator to make sure that you're getting the same exact thing. So this is not just a magic number, this is after putting it in my calculator, checking and double checking, this is the number that came out. So FT2, only one sig fig, is approximately 600 newtons. We know that FT1 was equal to FT2 cosine theta 2 divided by cosine theta 1. So this equals the unrounded number for FT2. 572.73 keeps on going newtons. Cosine 16 degrees divided by cosine 38 degrees. And for FT1, you should get 698.65 keeps on going newtons. One sig fig, FT1 is approximately 700 newtons. So this was, again, a substitution problem. We've seen them when we did constant velocity. We saw them for constant acceleration. We're seeing them now. We'll see them in the next unit. We're going to see problems like this all year. The process is exactly the same. You figure out what you need, you figure out what you have, you make equations, and then you substitute based on what you can eliminate. In this case, there was nothing really to eliminate. It was only two equations and two unknowns, so it was a little bit, I would argue, easier in that sense. But the trig with the sines and the cosines and making sure that you don't confuse those angles makes this a little bit harder. So I will do another example like this. And then you should be able to know how to do these kinds of problems for a test.